everybody, what's up? Welcome back. It has been a while. Um, this winter got busy and I have not been working on the airplane a lot. So kind of the worst case scenario, you take everything apart and then leave it for a couple weeks. Luckily, I've been labeling everything, organizing everything. I've got tons of little containers with a label maker for like screws and hardware, uh, kind of a lot of horizontal surface around the shop where I've just been laying stuff down. So kept it organized, kept it apart. Um, but yeah, I had to fly a trip for work that took about a week. Uh, we planned a trip out to Colorado. That took about a week. So with all of that, I have just been so busy. I haven't had a weekend at all in February where I've been working on this thing. Now it's March and uh, I've been working on it in the evenings, uh, trying to work as much as I can, but it's been cold out here. I haven't ha had a chance to get the heat hooked up, um, but yeah, I'm done. So I'm excited to show you guys the work and I filmed a lot uh, when I was working. So I've got a little bit of a process to get it finished up but I basically skipped the last couple of weeks of filming because I just came in here and worked. So I'll show you guys kind of a couple of the steps along the way, but other than that, I'll just show you what I got. So check this out. All right, so it's been another long day at work. Um, I was able to get all of the trays mounted up. Uh, I was able to test fit the um, radios and I got the remote uh, COM2 mounted as well as the uh, one of the Garmin uh, GAD29. So it's kind of cool, got stuff starting to fit in there. Now I can start to, you know, go back through it. I had to like measure all of the wiring, you know, make sure the harness could reach everything I wanted to do, every combination, and then uh, try to fit the boxes, make sure they would fit there. So yeah, it's pretty exciting, pretty good day, um, but it's slow and steady. It's gonna be several more before I get this thing uh, wired up, that's for sure. So here's the stack sitting here on the workbench. So this is the Garmin GNX375, followed by the Garmin GNC255, followed by the Precision Electronics um, PAR200B. And like I said, this has COM2, that has COM1, and then the GPS is at the top for the best visibility. Here are the um, mounts. Connectors are ready to go just to go into the trays themselves. And the harness is terminated everywhere all the way down to a, you know, audio in, uh, headset plugs, and then all I need is powers and grounds uh, and a couple of other connections. For upgrade, I had to go to the WAS antenna because I just had the cheap older uh, Garmin non-WAS aviation antenna. Uh, so I have this guy here and I already have the spot. This is where my Loran antenna used to live. And uh, recently when I put the G5s in, I took a block off plate back off of this and put the old antenna. Now I'm just throwing the WAS antenna on there. And uh, yeah, good to go. So that also requires a uh, newer upgraded coax because I just had RG58. And uh, most of the Garmin stuff I think requires RG400 uh, or 142, 145, I can't remember that one. Um, so between the two, I did not have that. So I have to remake the coax uh, GPS antenna line, uh, as well as now I'm determining whether I want to do the COM2 antenna line as well, because it is also the older RG58, and technically that um, remote COM says that you should have the newer stuff. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and replace that now because I've got the whole interior ripped out, like I said, during the annual to facilitate all this. So I might as well just make a new antenna line and have it all newer. Uh, but the COM1 was already done, so somebody did that a while ago. It looks like they put a newer antenna on there. Um, yeah, so here we are. Same progress. Like I said, old breakers down here, gonna go up in here. And then the iPad's gonna go back in. And then down here is the center stack. And then the glove box is gonna have the remote uh, avionics mounted behind it. Another part of any upgrade that's always fun is cleaning the airplane and leaving it better than you found it. So plenty of extra zip ties, plenty of extra, I don't even know what this is, basically the airplane equivalent of belly button lint. So cleaning that up, getting it out of there. 
Also, older style just mounting for harnesses. I mean, this is like a leather strap, so rubber maybe. Um, some of these like stick on plastic ones that just don't even work anymore. So that's all gone. Everything's going to be state of the art, uh, cleaned up. The harness will be nice and clean. So that's exciting for me. It's just something that it's nice to replace, you know, something hacked up with something, you know, nice and good looking. Like I said, with all these sheet metal pieces, you know, that's going to be replaced. These guys are going to get replaced with something nice. And uh, it's just going to be all done at the same time, uniform, nice and clean. So stay tuned. I'm going to keep uh, filming and rambling about all of this cool stuff. All right, so that didn't actually turn out too bad. Um, so the big thing was I was willing to sacrifice this acrylic. Um, and as you can see, a couple minor uh, spots where it chopped it. I was just using the acrylic as a quick guide to guide the drill bit in and it worked out really well. So here's the final. I've still got to deburr um, all the holes, clean it up, deburr it and uh, check it out. But that's a pretty sweet setup for the uh, panel. So the plan is to have this panel um, mounted uh, and then have the acrylic on top of it for the labeling. So this uh, test strip is just clear, but it'll be in the gray with the white lettering as the last time. So I'll have them stacked like this and you'll be able to see the lettering uh, for all the circuit breakers, as well as the dimmer USB and the jacks. Here is one more look of what's going in here. So there's the stack. Uh, here's the original panel. So this is the style that you will see with those circuit breakers. That will slide something like that. Boom. So something like that uh, is what you're going to see in the future. This is when I realized that I would have to pull the entire instrument panel out when I was trying to put these light rings in, all the paint cracked. So here's a new fresh coat of paint on the panel. Here's the uh, trial of the circuit breaker panel all put together. And here's the backside with the new bus bars, the rheostat, and the USB installed. This is a clear coat being applied to the new panel so that it'll protect the white paint. And this is it finally installed. You can see all the wires are still not connected and the entire panel has been removed. So here is everything. Um, it's all hooked up. It's raining today, so I figured I'd just talk through everything on the ground. It's probably a lot better because I'll be able to concentrate. So first and foremost, one of my favorite things is I hardwired in the box in and out so the GoPro can plug right in without having to do some adapter through a headset. So that's one huge step. Um, I really like that. Just some of this is some of the integration here. So. Here's the uh, GNX 375 in test mode. So if you look at it, come up here to the G5s and it's showing, you know, left deviation and up deviation. It's even showing it up here with your LDI. In here, you can just go in your menu and change it. So there's the VOR coming from the GNC 255 or just switch it back to the GPS input. So that's what's feeding your HSI here. Um, another cool feature, so I've had the G5s from before, about a year ago when I did the panel, uh, but now I've added the temp probe. So I've got outside air temp here. That allows it to calculate true air speed up here. And then density altitude is calculated here. That would have been huge this summer out in the high, uh, high altitude fields with high temperatures. Uh, just a cool double check that you did your math right. So a lot of information on both of these, and I already had a lot of information. So I'll just get out of this test mode here. So here's your basic screen. So I don't have GPS because I'm in the hangar, but here is your basic map screen. 
here's the terrain, which it just doesn't know where we are. And then here is, you know, basically any, uh, what is that nearest fields, but it doesn't know where they are. So it's touch screen, that's really cool. ADSB in and out. So here I can display traffic. And then it feeds the iPad as if it is a Stratus. So this will get GPS position as well as ADS information on here. So weather, um, not weather, but uh, traffic. So it'll get ADSB traffic in. So that's pretty sweet because I already had the iPad here, but now I don't have to have the Sentry or Stratus mounted to the window. Um, the GPS position from this GNX375 will feed to the 255 and it will feed to the iPad, like I said. It will also feed to the uh, engine analyzer. So this will take my fuel flow and all of my information and actually give me miles per gallon. It'll give me fuel until the next waypoint and uh, those kind of things. So a lot of integration with all these uh, devices. That's super cool. So yeah, not only is this my GPS, which is certified for GPS approaches, uh, IFR down to 200 feet, pretty sweet. Uh, it's also my transponder, like I said, um, and here's the transponder, put it on standby. You can just type in, because it's touchscreen, way better than an old Narco. Um, no offense if somebody still really loves their Narco unit, but I did. Um, it also is ADS-B out, so that's my new ADS-B out and in, like I said, really cool. Um, another thing that people said you can do, and I haven't done this yet, but if I put in like, had Savannah to Martinsburg for some reason. And then I think if I could share it to panel, come down here. That would be pretty sweet. Um, to be honest, I haven't been doing a lot of, uh, there's flight plan. Let's go back there. Flight plan. All right, so yeah, here it is. I've got to accept it somehow. One new imported flight plan available preview. Activate, place your current flight plan, yes. Savannah to Martinsburg. That's pretty sweet because that's a lot better than the old uh, 430 garments. That's pretty cool. You could type this up the night before at home, whatever, and then bam, share, done. So that's a sweet feature. Um, yeah, and then down to the uh, 255. So this is a Navcom, right? It just has my COM1 radio, but it, you can change this uh, COM standby to monitor. So now it went to MN right here, which means it's monitoring that frequency. So you can put ADIS over here and have ATC over here, you'd never have to leave. That's really cool. The feature that I just found to this morning that I really like is if I hit this function button, and this comm frequency list, it goes down through like nav, ICS, system, whatever. But if I'm in comm, I just scroll through uh, recent frequencies, user frequencies, database. So if I select database and then I just roll through this like a Eastern West Virginia Regional. Enter, select it, there it is, there's ADIS right there. It's out of the database, there's a lot of stuff. So it says ASOS, another cool feature that I really like, and it's not gonna show it today, but I hit function once again, like I did before. I start scrolling through, and let's see which way, nearest airport, I hit enter. Right now it says nearest airport, no GPS. Because, you know, I go back up here, I already told you guys, I've got no GPS position in the hangar. But it will find the nearest airport and it'll pull up that database right off the bat. So if you're just flying along and you're like, what's that? And then you hit nearest, oh, there it is, tune in there, ASOS, or maybe tune in there, CTAF, bam, right there and in. That's pretty cool. I really like it. This is my comm panel. PS Engineering, that's who I had before. This one is making a lot less interference noise right now. That's why I'm talking on the headset, as you guys, you know, probably put up with it. When I turn these landing lights on to like landing, you can see them on over there or even put on the wigwags. This used to make the squeak boop, squeak boop in my headset and I try to talk to you guys on a trip and it was miserable. That's gone. And I think it was due to my panel being so old. Well, this one replaced that, good to go. It's also got the Bluetooth symbol. I can link up the phones. The harness is run for all of these ports. All four of them, even the passengers back here, which I can't even see, are all in stereo. So stereo from the music, whatever you want to hear, super cool. You can listen to the same stuff together. This is the PAR200B. It's got a comm, a remote mounted comm. And I think I showed that earlier in the video. Back behind this glove box, there's a uh, transmitter that is mounted back there, as well as an interface unit for Garmin. So there's a comm back there and I can select it. It is my comm too. So there it is right now. I'm on comm too. 
I can also go COM1, that's the Garmin up here. So I have two COM radios, but I don't have two boxes because this is a COM panel like everybody has to have. So these three things take the space of everything else. So like I showed earlier, that's the glove box. Here's the main panel. And this used to be additional radios, but they're gone now because it's just circuit breakers. Because all I need is those three to feed everything up here. So anyway, that's what I got. Like I said, I had to pull the panel and I had to paint it um, because of all these screws kind of like broke free and chipped some paint. When I did that, I was able to find that this bushing, for both of my yoke tubes, the bushings were stuck. You needed some spacers in there, some shims, because they're supposed to rotate. So when you go all the way full back elevator, it rotates up right there. It's so subtle, it's hard to see. It needs that slight rotation, and I wasn't getting it. So I had a heavy elevator. It's fixed now. That's huge. I'm really excited about that. I also added the alternator light. Um, it was optional per the STC, but I went ahead and threw it in. And I moved my engine light over here. So this JPI has all kinds of settings, you know, set up for my engine, my, you know, aircraft. And if anything exceeds a limit, it comes over here and flashes. And it's yellow and it's red. So it's kind of like a big plane, right? It's divided into, like, warning and caution in a way. So it'll light up red and it'll tell you over there. And it'll light up yellow. So they say to put this as close in front of the pilot as possible. So I moved it back over that way. If I'm not paying attention to my engine monitor, I'll see red and I'll look over. Bam, good to go. Now the alternator, it should trigger a low voltage in here and it should still show up on the engine side. But straight off the alternator, there's your light. So, you know, if your light, if your switch is on and you're not producing voltage, bam, you've got alternator light, just like most planes. Figured I'd put it in. Just like I had before, I've got the USB in the front here. So one USB here on the back side, it feeds the iPad. So that's getting charged from that. Over here, I've got the Garmin GSB-15, so that's two more USBs for other stuff. It used to feed the Stratus or the Sentry, but now it doesn't need to. So we'll see what comes of that, but I can charge phones, iPads, whatever. And then the yoke, like I talked about, I had the old hoop yoke, so I took these, painted them. They look really shiny and nice. They've both got an integrated push-to-talk switch, so this one, that one over there. I never had a passenger push-to-talk. So that'll be really useful. But thanks for watching. I'm glad you guys stuck through it. If you got here, that means you watched all the boring stuff. If it's boring to you. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to see it all together. It took a lot of time. I had a lot going on this winter. And uh, yeah, it's all done. Good to go. And uh, we'll get it flying. So, you know, like this video. Subscribe. Follow along. Tell me what you guys like, what you don't like about these videos. And hopefully uh, you'll enjoy the next one too. See ya.